awful, terrible. A <laughs> uh, little bit of anxiety. That was Barbara Christ, co-owner of Happy Valley Vineyard and Winery located in State College. She's fretting over the discovery of the spotted lanternfly near her business. The invasive insect that was first found in Berks County in 2014 has now been seen across half the state. While this pest doesn't hurt humans or animals, it can wreak havoc on Pennsylvania's economy. That's because it's known to eat up to 70 varieties of tree and plant species. Research estimates that damage caused by the spotted lanternfly could cost the state $324 million annually and cut 2,800 jobs. I have visited other wineries. I've seen what's happened and I've seen devastation. The challenge is it's the adult population that really sucks on the grapevines. They'll, they'll go on the stems as well and uh, they will be on the leaves. They will, they will put their feces and, and honeydew on the leaves and then that creates a fungus that grows on the leaves. So it's all these things and it takes a lot out of the plant. It stresses the plant. Spotted lanternfly has been found in 45 Pennsylvania counties, all of which are now under a state-imposed quarantine. What this means is that no one in those counties can move spotted lanternfly in any viable stage, which is why some businesses within these quarantine counties are now required to get training and a permit. So certification is once you're in a quarantine area, uh, you become certified and you, you learn all the stages of the insect, you learn kind of the intervals, uh, what to look for, uh, you learn where the egg masses are going to be found and they're just, they can be just about everywhere. So you learn all those things and then you have a, a, a certification that's in your vehicle that, that if you're stopped, uh, you can prove that you are knowledgeable. It's free to get the permit, it does cost your time, but it's hopefully interesting and I think it helps build awareness of this invasive, but invasives in general. We move things around a lot and it affects businesses and agriculture and, and it's good to have that awareness out there. It's also important for non-business owners to learn the life cycle. The first, which occurs fall through spring, is called the egg stage. These egg masses look like splattered mud and can be found on any solid exterior surface, such as stone, wood, and even patio furniture. So if you find egg masses, if you're in an area where spotted lanternfly exists, you can scrape the egg masses off and put them into a container of alcohol or just physically smash them and clean them off of those objects. The next stage occurs in late spring when the eggs hatch. This is when nymphs emerge from the eggs. They immediately find trees and plants to climb so they can begin eating. They start out very tiny and black with white spots. By midsummer, they are slightly bigger and are red with white spots. And they can jump. So if you see something that you think might be a lanternfly and you poke at it and, it and it doesn't jump away from you, then you're probably looking at something else. But if it, if it jumps, it very well might be a lanternfly. There are two ways to kill nymphs. The first is by using a circle trap. Basically, it's like putting a, a funnel around a tree trunk. And as the, the lanternfly nymphs often will get blown out of the canopy of the tree, and fall to the ground. And then they crawl back to a trunk or a stem and they go, they crawl back up. So the circle trap intercepts that movement as they're crawling upward. And the bottom of the funnel trap, uh, the circle trap is open and they crawl into a central collection point where they can't get out. Um, one good circle trap can catch thousands of nymphs. So it really is a good way to protect individual trees. There are also approved insecticides that can be used against the nymphs. You want to use approved pesticides. Please don't use home remedies. Home remedies can actually be more damaging to your plants or the environment than people realize. So you want to use a registered insecticide and you can use very soft products like insecticidal soaps, insecticidal oils, some of the botanical oils that are labeled as insecticides can work very well. The nymphs become adults in mid to late summer. They are easy to recognize, are about an inch long, and have a mauve color with spots on their wings. For the adults, you can smash them or swat them with a fly swatter. Um, some people have used like shop vacs to suck them off of the trunks of trees when they're present in large quantities, and, and that works very well. You don't have to do anything else 
once you get them into the shop vac, just leave it sit somewhere in the heat for a day or two and then empty it out and that will kill them. Circle traps and insecticides can also work for some, but not all. That's because the timing of when the adults start to eat coincides with some of the grape harvest. The chemicals that we have for spotted lanternfly up to this point are ones that, you know, you, you need a, a, almost a two week period before you can get in and, and harvest. So these are the issues that people don't understand that we're going to be dealing with and will be a super challenge. Near the end of the summer, the adults become mature enough to mate and lay eggs. Then the life cycle of the spotted lanternfly begins again. The egg laying starts usually about the end of September and will proceed throughout the rest of the fall until the first killing frost, and that will kill all of the adults. And then um, only the eggs will overwinter. And at that point, people need to be searching for egg masses and disposing of them properly once again. Experts want all residents to learn more about these life stages. It can be done easily by going to the Penn State Extension website because this is something many feel we all need to be paying attention to. It's not just grapes that it's going to impact. You as a homeowner, if you've got red maple in your yard, uh, I have seen it devastate red maple, hickory, walnuts, things like that. So it's, uh, it's going to be on people's uh, landscape plants. And that's, it's going to hit everyone. Which is why all Pennsylvanians should be prepared. I'm Marissa Ferger for Weatherworld.